Hey guys, we're doing something new today. I have been talked by my friends into doing tarot readings for you guys because I'm a tarot reader. You guys know that I do it. My name is Blue Toulousma. I do podcasts. I do um, a lot of on-air work. I'm an emotional intelligence coach, X, Y, and Z. I'm also a writer. But the thing that I've been doing the longest since I was 16 years old is tarot card readings. And so today, I am going to be gifting you guys with free readings and i'm going to be trying to do this for on a weekly basis so i hope it goes well um the pick a card is probably the best way to do this so what we're going to do today is i'm going to have three piles of cards you guys are going to be using your intuition about which pile you think resonates with you the most and based on how much energy is coming at me and who needs these messages the strongest you're going to pick the card that resonates with you the most now, just know this, that um, this is a collective reading. Picking a pile that works for you, if you are looking at more than one pile, that is fine. That just means that there might be more than one pile that has a message for you. If you want to look at all three piles and be nosy, that's great. Or you might watch all of these videos and none of the piles are for you. The fun thing about doing weekly pick a card readings is that some weeks it might feel like every message is for you. Some weeks it might feel like no messages are for you. Only take what resonates and never let tarot or not even me, a, a spiritualist, ever take away your free will right? You guys always have the power to, if you get a message you love, do more of it. And if you get a message you don't love, do less of it. So we're going to start with these three piles today. This is pile number one. Take a look at this. This is pile number two. And this is pile number three. I'm going to let you guys use your intuition because I love doing pick a card readings because they allow the audience to be intuitive. Look at these three cards and take about 20, 30 seconds to figure out which of these piles resonates for you? Which of these piles feels like it might have a message for you? And when you are done with that, we will begin. Okay, for pile one, we are starting off with eight of wands, which is, I, I usually call it the good news fast card. This is a pile of movement. It is um, for any signs to help you figure out if this might be your pile. This correlates with any air signs like Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And it also correlates with the set sign of Sagittarius. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and Sagittarius. Doesn't mean that if you don't have those signs, it doesn't correlate to you. But if you were looking for confirmation, that might be a little bit of a nod. All right, let's do Oracle cards. Universe, what insight do you have for group number one? Universe, what insight do you have for group number one? Challenges, making a decision, working on inner healing. This is feeling like a deck, a card, a pile for a group of people who are in a space of transition. Commitment, things are getting serious. So... This is feeling heavily like shit or get off the pot. Let's pull some more cards. We picked up challenges and commitment. So you might be having conversations around, should I commit to this job? Should I commit to this relationship? Should I commit to this move? Should I commit? And there seems to be challenges or external factors that are making you wonder if you have the bandwidth to commit. All right, another Oracle card. Universe, please give me insight into pile one. Universe, Please give me the side pile one. I'm picking up not today, not dealing, hurt, avoiding a conversation or a call with the person, boundaries and still angry. Ooh, okay, okay. So this pile is for the folks who might be in separation or in conflict with someone or something that they care about. And during this separation, they're taking time out to figure out if they want to proceed or not. So if you are in a romantic relationship that you are on hiatus or you've hit a rough patch and you guys have been challenged or you are in a work situation where you thought you were committing to something that was good, but shit has gone left and now you're not sure anymore. This is saying that you or the other party have been avoiding a really um, tense but courageous conversation. Universe, can you please give me some insight into 
the not today. Universe, please give me insight into pile number one. Universe, what message do you have for pile number one? If you guys, if this resonates, please take it. If it doesn't, only take what fits for you. There are two other piles that you can always choose from. This pile feels very heavily air and fire signs in particular. This might resonate for you or someone who has strong air and fire placements. All right. Let's pull cards. Universe, please give me insight into pile number one. First card I'm pulling up is the Four of Cups. This is reinforcing not today. Four of Cups is someone who is holding on to old narratives. So if there was angry words being said, one or more of you is holding on to a grudge. I'm being told to shuffle again. Somebody's holding a grudge or somebody's holding on or crying over spilled milk, as they used to say. Universe, please give me insight into pile number one. Universe, please give me insight into pile number one. Cut the deck. Oh, these cards just all jumped out. First card we're getting is Six of Pentacles. There's been some feelings around give and take, right? Someone in the situation feels like they've been giving more than the other person, and that might have caused resentments. Knight of Wands represents a younger masculine energy, another air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, someone who um, is there for a good time, but maybe not for a, a long time. It speaks to someone non-committal, which is kind of a, is a nod to the commitment card that popped up over here. So somebody in this energy is being non-committal and the other party is feeling like they've given more than they've received. Then the King of Swords, I think this is you. The King of Swords is again, more, um, interesting energy. This is all fire and air guys. Again, fire and air is strongly coming up here. Someone who wants to have a conversation, but they cannot get the attention or the acknowledgement from the other party. So the Knight of Wands wants to have fun, wants to avoid the conflict, wants to pretend everything's okay, even though everything's not okay. And the King of Swords is like, no, we need to talk about this. Um, then we're getting the Chariot. A feeling of being um, restless and annoyed and wanting to get to the end of this. And the Eight of Pentacles having to decide if they're going to work together. I'm going to pull a clarifying card. Um, let's see. Universe, can you give me a clarifying card on group number one? This feels like whoever this group is for is saying you are not crazy. You are in an inequitable situation where all parties are not giving their best. And one of you is feeling resentful. And both of you want to move forward, but you cannot move forward unless this conversation happens. And right now you're trying to figure out, can we work together? Eight of Pentacles. Pentacles is Earth cards. So that is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Can we work together? I'm not seeing very much water. The only water I'm seeing is when you are um, complaining in your head, but everything else is the other three elements. Universe, please give me insight into what advice would you give to this person who was in this energy universe? What advice would you give to the person who is in group number one, who is trying to figure out if they should commit or cut their losses, and who might be in a situation where a courageous conversation is not happening? Two of Wands means one of you has already considered leaving the situation. Again, this could be a romantic situation. This could be a um, family situation, or it could be something that is having to do with work. You guys let me know what resonates for you. Universe, please give me more clarity. We're pulling up the Seven of Wands. That's more, it's just feeling a lot about work, guys. If this is not work, then it's a relationship that's a, a, a personal relationship that is starting to feel like work. And then 10 of Pentacles. Ooh. So, and the Fool. All right, what I'm picking up is one of you really, really wants to have it all. One of you wants to go all in and commit to whatever the situation is. And the other of you is not sold yet and is feeling very much like, but what else is out there? You guys are not on the same page. Um, I got the full card, which is a new beginning has to happen. I'm going to, this is feeling a little bit more romantic than I expected. So I'm going to pull up my romance cards. You guys, let me know what kind of readings do you want? This is supposed to be a general reading, but for some reason, this is already feeling very romantic. Universe, please give me insight into the new beginning. If one party is committed and wants more and the other party is on the fence or dragging their feet, universe, give me insight into what advice would you give to pile number one? Universe, what advice would you give to pile number one? And the advice is, this could be the one for giving and learning. So this is saying you already met your romantic partner that you seek, but as you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present. So that's surprising. What this is saying is you are in a situation where there is love, 
but that you could only have a new beginning because the full card is a new beginning if you guys completely come clean about all the shit that you cannot stand and forgive each other. This is a relationship that will only work if there is complete transparency and forgiveness on the other side of transparency. And the forgiveness cannot come just from being transparent. Obviously, forgiveness has to come from improved behavior. But this is saying that the love there is so heavy that despite the fact that you guys are currently not on the same page, deep down, you both want to figure out if you can make this work. I'm also picking up here um, that someone might be keeping a secret that they need to come clean about. Addiction, ooh, codependent, obsession, possession, um, controlling, has a block or restraint. Yeah, one of you has deep feelings that you're not being honest about. So I'm picking up heavily that there's a confession that has to be made. I think one of you has to be honest with yourself and the other party how addicted or um, invested you are. It almost feels like somebody in the situation has a fear of intimacy. And so they're pretending not to care at all because they're really scared that they care too much. Universe, let's give a quick thing around timelines. I'm going to say, let's see if there's any timelines. You guys like to pull up timeline oracles. If it resonates, again, go for it. If it doesn't, then it's not for you. The timeline for this is within a year. So this is either a relationship that started within this year or a relationship that will come to a culmination within a year. I'm picking up 2024. So I'm, I'm going to say within this year. And another strong universe. Give me one more timeline. I'm picking up because a year is, I don't know about y'all, but a year is a long time. Within a year, universe, can you give me a clarifier within a year? A season, a date, a month, something, universe, can you give me a clarifier within a year? Last card. On a rainy day. That's interesting. And one more. At night. All right, so there might be a late night confession or late night conversation in your future. This is saying that within this year, it says within a year, but I'm hearing loudly 2024, this will have to culminate and come to a conclusion this year, 2024. And the last card I'm going to pick is a general oracle card, right? You guys are being told a pretty clear message of you are in a situation where one or more parties are not being honest about their true feelings. Someone has a confession to make, a secret to make, or feelings that they need to reveal because they're not being honest. And by the end of 2024, this has to come to a head because there's a courageous conversation that has to happen in order for you guys to work together to have this new beginning. Now, I'm saying this as if it's romantic because for some reason, I think the majority of you guys watching this are gonna be thinking romantically. Please write in the comments if you want me to focus more on romantic readings. But this could also be applied to family and work. So take it as it makes sense for you. And then the final card for this group is consciousness. Oh, well, that makes total sense. You need to stop lying to yourself and to the other parties involved. There's a lack of self-awareness that is causing this issue. Please, please, please implore all parties to see the situation from each other's standpoint. So if you are, let's say, having an argument with your boss and you don't see things from their way, be a little bit more mindful about maybe you're not getting that raise or you feel like you have to quit because the budget is tight and it's not because they don't love you, but it's because you haven't advocated for a raise or showed up in a way that makes it make sense. Or let's say you're in a relationship and the relationship has died or isn't giving you what you need, you're going to have to advocate and be honest about how much you care so the other person who is non-committal can decide if they want to commit or not or set you free. Or if it's something with family, because the, the Ten of Pentacles is also a family card, if there's a family member that you have to have a conversation with in order for you to feel safe engaging with them, this is saying you are going to have to have that conversation. So pile number one is very, very heavy handedly coming off like this is the pile for people who are having conversations about do they want to shit or get off the pot? Do they want to invest more in their relationships or is it time to cut their losses and keep it moving? I hope this was helpful. And this sums up our reading for pile number one. Love y'all. Hey family, welcome to pile number two. If you pick pile number two, you pick the hermit card, which is signified by the earth sign Virgo. 
This is the I want to go lay down, I want to stay in the house, I want to withdraw and be in my own thoughts card. If you look at this card right now, you can see it's a young figure. You can't tell if it's male or female sitting having what is a depiction of the dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul is when you go inward, right? Like you travel inward to figure out how do you really feel about things. So this card is more for the introspective person. The last deck for people who were looking at pile number one, I feel like a lot of you might have been torn between pile number one and number two. If you were thinking about pile number one, that was more externally focused around relationships. This one seems more internally focused around how you feel. Universe, please give me some clarifying cards for pile number two. Universe, what message do you want to share with pile number two? Just give me insight. Okay. Oh, I'm getting pregnancy. Wow, was not expecting that. And patience. Just a few more months, good things to come to those who wait. Now, pregnancy, when it comes to tarot, is not always literal, although it can be. So if you don't want to have a baby, please use a condom. Pregnancy is often a card in tarot and oracle cards that talk about giving birth to new ideas. However, for this oracle deck, it could mean pregnancy, actual pregnancy. So if you are someone who is in a relationship where this is a factor, this might be a sign that this is for you. And then patience. This feels like the, the louder message for this group. Just a few more months, good things to come to those who wait. So what this is feeling like is this might be the pile of people who have a lot of dreams and thoughts and ideas, but are not necessarily um, sure about what is gonna come to fruition. And they might be wondering, is it time to pivot? Is it time to invest? Like, what do I do? Universe, please give me insight. What messages do you wanna share with group number two? I'm gonna use a different tarot deck this time. Universe, please give me insight. Oh, before I do the insight, let me pull up one more oracle. Sorry, my, my manners. Let's pull up this Oracle Universe. Do you have one more Oracle message to share with pile number two? Universe, do you have one more Oracle message? Addiction. This actually, okay, I knew it. Pile number one and pile number two, I think they're connected. This um, actually came up in pile number one. What are the, the chances? Addiction. Codependent, obsession, possession, controlling, has a block restraint. So this addiction card along with this Dark Knight of the Soul Hermit card, Virgo energy, Earth sign energy. So that's Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. I'm going to pull up one more since addiction popped up at the last pile. I just want to make sure that this is not the same energy that's transferring over. Ooh, the butterfly. Relationships evolving to the nest phase, healing the inner child and growth. Okay, these two are heavily connected to the hermit card because butterflies tend to retreat like hermits to go into a cocoon, a chrysalis, if you will, in order to reimagine how they emerge from caterpillars to butterflies. So this is speaking of a group of people who might be experiencing an ego death. You guys know how much I love ego deaths if you follow me on Instagram. So the fact that there's an ego death pile, my very first pick a card reading is actually freaking hilarious. All right. Let's shuffle some cards. A card just jumped out. I'm not sure if I want to use her, so I'm going to keep shuffling. Universe, what insights do you have for um, pile number two? Ace of Swords. I had a feeling we were going to get more Swords cards. Ace of Swords. Universe, what message do you have for pile number two? Ooh, Ten of Swords. Yeah, I can see why this pile is withdrawing. You guys are burnt out. Ten of Swords. Universe, what other message do you have for this pile? Queen of Swords. My heavens. This is all air signs. So this is all um, uh, Aquarius, uh, Libra, and Gemini. Heavens. This is heavy, heavy air energy. So if you are a earth sign or an air sign or there's an earth or air sign that's on your mind... Six of Cups, this is someone from your past or relationships that feel like people are kindred. And then this is a very introspective deck. And then oh, give and take. Yeah, Power 1 and Power 2 are definitely connected. So this, okay, this is interesting. This group of people might not be the group of people that their friends would naturally call um, an introvert and they would be wrong. Let me explain. 
I'm getting this whole butterfly thing. I keep on hearing the word social butterfly along with butterfly. I'm hearing addiction. These seem like cards like the last couple of months, you might have been outside having a great time. You actually might not be someone who's always in the house. You might actually know, be known for being someone who likes to party or who's charming and outgoing. That might be how you externally seem like a social butterfly who's out here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, having a great time. However, you don't know how people are when they go in the house. This hermit card is saying despite how active you might be out of necessity or habit, you are experiencing an ego death where you are having a lot of introspective moments. A lot of moments of sitting on that hill and having to face your darkest fears and thoughts about what do I really want? And it's causing you to be restless. The Ace of Swords is basically in the mental realm, right? The way I do my readings are mind, body, spirit, wild card, and then the outcome. In the mental sector, you have the Ace of Swords. You're having some really interesting conversations with yourself about how you look and show up in the world. So this is personal branding. This is career. This might even be how you show up in your relationships with your friends and your family. This all speaks about how do I show up in the room and do I enjoy it? And I'm hearing that for a lot of you, the answer is no. Even if you are seen as everybody's favorite, people love you, they have fun with you, you are burnt out. This is the deck of people, the pile of people who are burnt out, which is interesting because pile number one was the pile of people who were courting burnout and who had to have a conversation with a third party before they could make sure that they didn't burn out. This is the pile of people who are flat out burnt out. So this almost feels like a continuation of pile one. This card literally shows you face down with 10 swords in your back, you cannot get up. So between the 10 of swords and the hermit card, your pile is being told very much, sit the hell down. Spirit wants you to sit your ass down and have some really, really ugly, greasy, honest conversations with yourself about output and input and how much energy you're getting. The queen of swords, she of all the queens has the sharpest tongue. So I'm going to be mindful, guys. Every single queen has a personality. Queen of Cups is loving. Queen of Wands is sexy and creative. Queen of Pentacles is all about her coin and her paper. The Queen of Swords is all about cutting the bullshit. She literally has a sword to help you cut the BS. She wants to get to the truth. What is the truth? This week, you are going to have to ask yourself, what do I really want everybody else be damned? And I'm hearing that there's going to have to be some conversations about people who you have attachment to. This Six of Cups is usually someone who you feel like is a soulmate or someone that you've known since childhood or something around children might be involved. So this speaks to attachment, right? Which is a nod to the previous card earlier of addiction. So this speaks to a group of people who might be doing things out of attachment and obligation to people that they love, that they've known for a while, or who that they feel like they want to build a life with, right? So you might be burnt out because you're trying to be a fun person or you're trying to be a loving person or a giving person or showing up in a certain way for other people, but the narrative is burning you out and it's not working for you anymore. Again, this is reinforcing it. Six, in pentacles, six of pentacles, give and take. Are you the person who's giving or are you the person who's always receiving, right? When six of pentacles comes up, it means that conversations around reciprocity and bandwidth need to be had. And final outcome we got was the 10 of cups. You sincerely want to be emotionally fulfilled. So let's have a conversation, guys. If you are a workaholic and you are um, watching this pile, it is telling you to sit down and renegotiate how you show up in the room, right? Because between the pregnancy card, the children card, and even this card of 10 of pentacles with a, a two partners and their kids, it feels like someone who wants to have a more thriving and fulfilling personal life. These all scream, you want a thriving and fulfilling personal life, but how are you supposed to do that if you are burnt out? How are we supposed to do that if you're giving to people who are not re reciprocating or receiving from people who are not letting you be there for them? How are you doing that if you're not having a dark night of the soul? So how are you doing that if you're not being patient? This seems to say that what you really want and how you're prioritizing your time in real life might not be in alignment. So if you thought this was going to be your hustle summer where you were going to work hard and play harder, this is saying not so much. 
They are saying that you want to be focusing on your family, on your personal life, on your romantic life, on your love life, on your family planning. This pregnancy card, if a woman is watching this or someone who can have a baby, be mindful that if you don't want to wear, be, get pregnant, please, please, please wear a condom. Okay, if you are able to be with child or you were able to impregnate somebody and you don't want a baby, this is saying that you might get somebody pregnant. Please, please, please consider uh, using a condom and birth control. But if you do want children, if you do want a family, if you do want this 10 of cups, which is like the most happy emotional card in the entire deck, it is saying you're going to have to be more honest with yourself about your output and your bandwidth. Because it's saying that what you want and how you're living are currently not in alignment. All right, I hope that was clear. Let's also pull up some timeline cards. Let's see if I get any timelines for you guys. It's really shocking. I mean, this is my first time doing a general read, but these messages are very specific, which means very specific people are getting their messages. Universe, please give me insight into any timelines of significance that you want to share with Power 2. Universe, please give me insights into any timelines of significance that you want to share with Power 2. Within three months. So your spirit guides are giving you 90 days to figure this out. Within three months. That is very finite. And then lastly, we're going to pull any last messages, universe. What is the advice that you want to give? Well, that jumped out quickly. The advice that you, oh shit. The advice that you got next to patience is caution. Ooh, y'all need to be careful. Um, I don't like to do anything medical because I've been advised by lawyers not to do anything medical when it comes to tarot readings. But between the pregnancy card um, and the caution card and the patience card, and even this says just a, oh my God, look at this guys. This says just a few, just a few more months. And then this says three months. Okay, that is freaking eerie. Yeah, for the people who this message is for, it's very heavily handled for you. In the next 90 days, you're going to have to do a complete overhaul in how you live your life. If you are a person who identifies as a woman who can get pregnant, um, this is saying if you want to have a baby, you're going to have to work on your schedule and on your bandwidth before you can have a child. If you are someone who wants to be in a serious relationship or who wants more um, fulfillment in your personal life, if you're already married or in a relationship or courting a relationship, it is saying that you have to be more honest about creating time to cultivate these relationships because currently you're overworking yourself. So it's saying caution. So the words that you need to think about are three months, caution, burnout, and dark night of the soul. Okay, and I'm going to show this to you guys one more time. Heavy Virgo energy. I'm picking up heavy Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. Um, actually, I don't see any Earth. You could be an Earth sign, but the strongest energies right now I'm picking up are for air um, and a little bit of Virgo, a little bit of Earth, and a whole, whole lot of overthinking. And also, too, the cups, I will say this, the cups is water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, um, and Pisces. Um, but this is speaking of someone who has to renegotiate because the, the life in their head and the life that they're currently living are not in alignment. I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, if you want to book a private reading with me, please look in the description box, bluecentricshop.com backslash readings, and my calendar is fully open. Love y'all. Hey family, it's time to do the final group, group three, King of Wands, which is represented by, um, actually, what is the King of Wands represented? I think it's Leo and Cancer. Yeah, King of Wands is Leo and Cancer energy. You can even see a little lion in the background. I'm gonna put it up here. All right, let's see what messages we have for this card. And for those who are not familiar with all the different kings, the King of Wands is known for being creative. He's known for being forceful, charismatic, bold, really innovative, about that life. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's actually also often associated with other fire signs like Sag and Aries as well. So it's B BDE, Big Peen Energy. All right. Universe, please give me insight into what oracle cards, what messages you have for group number three. I need to stop hitting my camera. Sorry, guys. Universe, what messages do you have for group number three? Someone else. Someone is in the middle. Someone is trying to sabotage this. And liar. Who? Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It got spicy real fast. 
Okay, uh, group number three is about to be the spicy one. And I was wondering, I was like, are any of these going to get spicy? I just got my answer. Okay, if you are someone who could be accused of being a fuckboy, um, and uh, I said accused because it's a matter of opinion, um, or you're someone who thinks you might be um, involved with someone who is a dishonorable, this deck, this pile is definitely for you. Someone else means there's a relationship between two people where a third party has been allowed to come and interfere. Someone is in the middle. Someone is trying to sabotage this. Sabotage is a very strong word. Liar. Be careful of someone sneaky. And then, of course, this is the king of wands, which is he's known for being a bit of a whore. I'm not even going to hold you. He's a little bit of a hoe. He is fun. He is charismatic. He is bold, but he can be a hoe sometimes. He's often here for a good time, not a long time. So if this is you, oops, didn't mean to blow up your spot. If this is about someone that you're dating or interested in or doing business with, then I'm happy I blew up their spot because y'all came here for clarity. Okay. So we are going to pull another Oracle card because those last two were very uh, heavy handed. The next card is Hammer. Sabotage, rebuilding, interrogation, repetitive, persistent, working on it. Damn, y'all got another sabotage card? What are the chances that y'all would get two sabotages? Look at this. Sabotage and sabotage. Yeah, this group, y'all got haters. I hate to use this term. I hate to use that word. This is the group of people who are in the midst of frenemies or a partner who is being dishonest. Someone in your ecosystem is being dishonest. I'm going to say this, guys, before I continue. I'm going to call these gentle, compassionate reminders. Um, this is a tarot reading. It is a collective reading. This cannot resonate for everybody. Everybody watching this pile will not all find messages. If you think that everybody in your life is very honest and there is no duplicity and your man or your girl would never cheat on you, then this is simply not your pile. However, if you have in any way suspected that there was foul play or that somebody was playing in your face or someone was lying, my cards are screaming at me with a hammer that somebody is lying to you, okay? So again, do not give your power up to tarot. However, for whoever this message is for, your spirit guides are screaming at me to keep it a buck with you, okay? I just always wanna give that disclaimer about being gentle and compassionate with yourself about what resonates and what doesn't. All right, so for this deck, I'm gonna cut the cards. We got King of Swords, someone wanting to tell the truth, Four of Cups, someone holding on, Queen of Swords, oh yeah, one of y'all's mad. The star card and the two of pentacles. Okay, I don't know how to say this, but somebody, I'm going I'm to keep this a buck because these cards are saying the same thing over again. Whoever this is for, you're being cheated on, babes. You're being cheated on. And here's the thing. It might not be sexual cheating. The person who is cheating on you, who is, look at this, they're literally juggling you and someone else. It's such, these are the juggling cards. These are all cards of like hoe activity, right? And I don't mean like an ethical hoe either, because being an ethical slut is a thing, but some of y'all be lying with y'all hoeing. This is somebody who is being duplicitous, um, has a third party in your business, and who is juggling you and something else. The star card, though, this is where shit gets wild. They love you. This person loves you, but is still full of shit. The king of swords is they want to tell you the truth. They think about, damn, I should really come clean to this person. But the four of cups has them stuck in their head like, nah, this is how I've always been. He or she knew what it was. The queen of swords, this, this is the spirit card. I think this is you. Whether you're male or female, you want the truth. And they want to tell you the truth. And yet the truth has yet to come out because you're still being juggled. Now, here's something that I'm hearing very loudly. For a lot of you, this third party might not be a mistress or a side piece. It could be a mother, um, a best friend, a coworker. It doesn't have to be somebody that they're sleeping with because I'm picking up because of this king of swords. And the king of swords is usually honest. Whenever you see a sword, that's supposed to be integrity, right? This is the sword of truth. This person wants to have integrity, but I feel like they might be venting to someone in their life who doesn't mean you well and who's trying to sabotage you. Because I keep on hearing saboteur. A saboteur is very different than a side piece, right? A, a side piece could be a saboteur because obviously they're fucking your man or your girl. But this almost feels like someone who under the guise of caring for your person is giving them advice that's meant to break you guys up. And when I pick up these cards, I pick up not the right time and trust. This feels like trust is an issue 
rather than an opportunity. I'm going to pull more cards because this is scandalous. Let's pick up the cards around time frame. Universe, this scandalous cards um, that are popping up for Pile 3. Pile 3 is either... There's two people, kinds of people who are watching Pile 3. Those who are lying and those who are being lied to. If you are lying, the universe is telling you that you need to come clean. If you are being lied to, the universe is telling you um, it's time to trust your situation, babe, because this is not right. June. The month of June is popping up as far as timeline, which was just the month that we passed in. Depending on when you're watching these, all these readings are timeless. But at the time of this reading being done, it is July 7th. It is saying that something significant might have happened in June or April. Or one of you could have been born in June or April. So there's some significance around the month of June and the month of April. But somebody that you care about is being dishonest with you. Um, and this is not the right time for this relationship to prosper. Universe, please give this person some advice. Universe, what advice would you give pile number three? This pile is going to be fast because it's a scandalous. Um, these cards have found five different ways to tell me you're being lied to. I don't even want to... I don't want to be one of those tarot readers that makes things long and drawn out when it's clear as hell. You are being lied to. Somebody that you care about, if this is your pile, again, do not force it if it doesn't make sense. But if this is your pile, somebody that you care about is lying to you about how they feel about the relationship and their energy that belongs solely to you is also being shared elsewhere. I got the peace card upside down. Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm going to pull another card because I never got a card. Like it's a peace dove upside down. And I don't even do upside down cards, but this card felt like it wanted to come upside down. Yeah, if you're married or in a relationship or um, dealing with somebody that you really care about, start asking them questions around about their friends and their family and who they're confiding in. Because somebody is actively trying to get your person to like not be with you. Ooh, and I hate being the person that's... I hate negative readings, but I promised myself that when I was doing these, I would just be a messenger... I got determination, um, sweetness. I'm pulling out more because it's a scandalous and balance. So this is telling me that the person who you're dealing with is defensive. And if you are not balanced and sweet and logical, asking them these questions, you might get, you guys might get into an argument, which will only help the saboteur pull you guys even further apart. Ooh. Okay. I pulled out narcissist, sexuality, and water sign. Ooh, this is Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. This is either you or your partner. Sexuality, someone is still figuring themselves out, which is why they might be cheating on you. And narcissist, someone is finding a way to justify lying to you because they're so full of themselves. You guys, I am sorry. I did not expect this to happen on my first time doing a collective read. Um, but for those who were strongly drawn to pile three and who um, were told that this is their pile and they're still watching because it resonates, um, this isn't the best of news. Although I will say this, um, if you think this is your message and it's resonating to you and you're not fighting it and your spirit deep down is saying you knew, at least you have a third party, me, who doesn't know anything about what's happening in your life, who's objectively telling you that you're not crazy. I'm, I'm hearing that this is probably the most specific pile that I've done today. For this pile, it's very specific. This is for the folks who suspected that something was off and they just needed a sign. And today, God sent me as your sign. Universe, what insight would you give? Give us some advice because this was not great. Universe, what insight would you give to pile number three? Universe, what insight would you give to pile number three? Universe, what insight would you give to pile number three? I'm going to not internalize feeling bad for being a messenger. And I'm just going to tell you what it says. It says, a past life relationship. Love yourself first. Um, yeah. And last but not least, this has come up four times, guys. Trust. Okay, so this is tricky. Even though there's a saboteur, I picked up a bunch of cards about you being sabotaged. And that there's a narcissist. I'm starting to wonder if the narcissist is not your partner. Is the narcissist... Okay, so I'm getting more than one message. For some of you, the narcissist is your partner. The person who is stepping out on you and juggling you with somebody else. But for others of you, the narcissist is actually the third party who is trying to break up your relationship. Because I got the word trust twice. And I want to honor that. 
I got trust in this deck and trust in that deck. For those of you who've been watching all three piles, you're seeing that even though I'm shuffling like live in front of y'all, there's some patterns that are coming up for each pile. Each pile has its own thing. So what I'm hearing is there are some of you who need to trust your person by having a courageous conversation with them about how you don't trust their best friend or their homie or whoever, their mother maybe, whoever it is that they're confiding in that you've already had bad. I'm hearing you're not surprised. You've already had a bad feeling that this person is not rooting for y'all and you need to trust them enough to have this conversation like, hey, I don't think your sister is rooting for us or I don't think your ex is really your friend. I think she's waiting for us to break up. So this is saying to trust your partner or yourself and or yourself. The star card is saying that this person loves you, but the two of pentacles is saying that they are juggling. So this might be someone who's juggling you and another person in their life who is important to them. And they're justifying their connection to this person as a way to let that person dishonor your relationship. So for those of you who are in relationships, this one feels heavily romantic. This is saying to trust yourself and ask yourself, do you trust your partner? Because even though love is there, um, I'm not sure about it, you know, if, if integrity is there. You can love somebody and have no integrity. Now, this is how happened for any of my other piles. I'm being told, I was not expecting this, I'm being told to pull from a fresh deck that I have not pulled from yet. I have the Psychic Heart Oracle deck. I'm going to pull a single card from this deck to give me advice on what I should tell you guys. Universe, for this pile in particular, because this is a heavy message, what would be your final message to pile three who might be confirming through this reading that they are dealing with a third party interference or a saboteur who is trying to ruin a relationship or relationships that they hold dear? Love. Focus on the love. Love has not come up several times. Love and trust. If you really love this person, then y'all need to have a courageous conversation and master your emotions. So when you do bring this up, do not be hysterical. Do not be accusatory. Just be compassionate and honest. Okay? Wow. That one was a little bit heavier than I expected. Okay, guys. That um, concludes my first general read i hope you whether you're in pile one two or three were able to get the messages that you need if it resonated i'm so happy if it didn't no worries please come back another time i'll be doing these weekly for the next three to six months um if you have any suggestions around what kind of um readings you want me to do let me know i feel like these readings were unexpectedly more romantic than i thought i was trying to do a general reading but so many of these felt very romantical so if that's something you guys want me to do more of let me know um because it's cancer season i'm considering doing maybe some zodiac readings um for cancer and other signs and i might go live on here i've gone live on instagram a million times but i have not gone live on here um, before I go, though, I wanted to do a quick little gift, yes or no questions. These yes or no questions are going to be something for people who just want to use me as a magic eight ball. I'm going to have these cards and I'm going to pick two answers, right? So you are able to pick between two different piles what the answer is to your question. So I am going to say, universe, please give me an answer for pile number one. And universe, please give me an answer for pile number two. All right, guys, these are two answers. Please focus on these and ask yourself which pile resonates. Ask your question. Give yourself about 10 seconds to ask a yes or no question. Yes or no questions only. And after you've asked yourself a yes or no question, ruminate on which, if any, of these piles speaks to you. You might resonate with one of these piles. You might resonate with both of these piles. You might resonate with none of these piles. As always, take what fits and leave the rest. All right, for those who picked pile number one, the answer to your question is be assertive. Oh, that's freaking annoying. I like yes or no's, but the answer that Spirit is sending you is be assertive. And for those who asked a yes or no question for pile number two, yours is listen to your intuition. Oh, that is so annoying. I'm going to ask for a clarify. I'm a Taurus. I like clear answers. Be assertive and listen to your intuition is so freaking annoying. I'm going to ask universe, what is the clarifier for be assertive? The clarifier for be assertive is peaceful resolution. Okay. They're telling you to be brave and be assertive about a peaceful resolution. For pile number two, for the yes or no questions, 
What is the clarifier for pod number two for the yes or no questions? Please be as clear as freaking possible. Listen to your, your intuition and take action. So for pod number one, it's saying be assertive and fight for a peaceful, peaceful resolution. And for pod number two, it's saying listen to your intuition and take action. Both of these are a little bit um, more esoteric and abstract than I hoped because there are some yeses and nos in here. But I guess this week, spirit does not want to give you a strong yes or no because it doesn't want to take your way your free will, which is fair. All right, guys, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, please log on to bluecentricshop.com backslash readings. I'm at bluecentric on Instagram and Twitter and at bluetoolusma on TikTok. I hope that was helpful. Oops, I just hit, I just hit my thing. I hope that was helpful. Until next time, bye, guys.